And I was a single monitor person for a very long time. And it's mostly because I didn't love the split down the middle look for, for my setup at all. And I know that a lot of people were very fond of that type of setup and that a lot of people still use it. And there's nothing wrong with it. And I get it too. I mean, it's symmetrical. I like my symmetry, but in this case, it just wasn't so much for me. However, in the search for a secondary monitor that I could use for keeping track of chat during my streams, having documents or articles for reference when I do all of my schoolwork, or simply to have as an extension from my day-to-day -day YouTube work was one that became very appealing and it was a search that I immediately had to go on after some time. I came across this bad boy for extremely cheap on Amazon and I have to say that I'm super happy with it. Introducing the Acer 2 7 to 27 inch monitor. Let's go ahead and dive in. The exterior design is going to consist of plastic for pretty much the entirety of the monitor itself. And the base itself is actually very hefty and certainly does a great job at holding this monitor up. This monitor feels like it's built well enough for the price and it's quite large, especially for that price and the specs that it features. It just feels very ideal for me and well, allow me to indulge you further in why that is the case. And as for ports, you will find a DisplayPort port, an HDMI port, a VGA port, an audio in port, an audio out. It's quite the package and offers a lot of flexibility when it comes to connectivity. Now, I pretty much only had a single DisplayPort left at my disposal from my RTX 2080, and I'll talk about my build and how well it fares with productivity, streaming, and gaming in a future video. But needless to say, I hooked it up easily thanks to its flexibility when it comes to its ports. And now, we're gonna go ahead and talk about its versatility. So the main reason why I purchased this monitor in the first place is because of its ability to be used vertically due to my limited desk space at, at this point. I simply could not hook it up horizontally, unfortunately, or any, any monitor for that matter. And in that case, because of how limited my desk space was at this point. But the process of rotating it or adjusting the height is actually very simple and it doesn't require much effort on your end either. So quite frankly, I think that they nailed that as well. And now, in regards to the quality of this display, I would like to present some specs. This is a 27 inch 1920 by 1080 IPS display running at 75 Hertz and one millisecond response time that also supports FreeSync. All of this for around $180 when I bought it brand new. For the price, this display does look pretty sharp and the colors look good too for the most part. I trust it for my semi-color accurate work if I never need to use it for such, but professionals who strongly depend on nearly perfect color accuracy should definitely look at other options. It's since it's a little obvious that the colors here just aren't really as vibrant or pleasant on this display in spite of it being an IPS screen than what you will find on another higher-end screens, and that is definitely worth noting. However, for everyday task and its vertical configuration, it gets the job done perfectly. If I need to reference any articles while working on any kind of school assignments on the side, I just have a bunch of tabs open and being able to seamlessly move between both. My main display and this Acer one is actually quite nice due in part to its 75 Hertz refresh rate. And it just feels sm smoother than using a 60 Hertz screen from my experience. And for this type of usage, it certainly gets the job done, no doubt. However, one thing that you will notice is that this screen does not get really all that bright, that my main monitor is considerably brighter than my side Acer monitor. So do keep that again in into consideration. It might not be the best for any kind of bright situations, even though it, it is still a matte screen, but it's not still the best of, of displays that you can find out there. However, for actual work like streaming and video editing and photo editing, etc., it's also a joy to use for the most part, even if it won't flawlessly fulfill my purposes. I sometimes use it for designing my thumbnail on the side while having my Resolve project open, in case I just leave anything stabilizing on the side uh, so that I'm not wasting any time and I can still remain productive in any way I can. For designing my thumbnails, 
I think it's fine for that. I probably wouldn't actually do any kind of like professional photo editing of any kind on it though. I just stick to my main display for that. Now when streaming, however, this amount of real estate is a godsend. And Streamlabs OBS is fully operable from the side with it. While comfortable accommodating for things like chat and everything I need in order to monitor my Twitch streams. And I think that it is pretty awesome. It's honestly really nice uh, just for having as an extension to my Resolve projects as well while I'm video editing. And just having that extra space has always been incredibly useful and I can just do so much with it. I like using it for audio monitoring too. And you don't need a display and that is really that rich in colors or anything like that. And if you're just recording yourself and if you just want that wavelength eyed, as I often tend to do. And I like to use it this way pretty often and I think that it works pretty well as it just allows me to multitask. It is pretty good stuff and just having that extra screen a great one at that for so little, again, just feels really good. I do, however, would like to mention some of the compromises with this monitor that you would be making. Firstly, there is a bit of backlight bleeding and it doesn't bother me all that much, just considering all of my usage. And it is worth noting and the viewing angles still feel a little bit off. It's not as good as the IPS panels on higher end monitors without a doubt. And this monitor also has a tendency to get a little warmer than I would like. I do use it almost all day though, when I'm working at home. So I suppose that it is par for the course. And another thing is that as you would have noticed, uh, the screen does not really get all that bright. And it can be a little bit problematic if you were expecting a brighter display. It's just not exactly that rich when it comes to its visuals, but it's fine enough for everything that I needed to do. So yeah, it's a cheap monitor, but it offers a lot for your money, if you ask me. And it's a seriously good value, uh, since it is a great display for a lot of purposes, even if it won't suffice for any kind of color accurate work, at the very least for professionals. And it's got a decent refresh rate. It's an IPS panel and it features FreeSync, a bunch of useful ports, and it can be flipped vertically. It's a great size. It just gets the job done very well for me. And I feel like my money was very well spent for monitoring my stream, editing, and general multitasking. Honestly, highly recommend it. I'm really happy with the screen for the money. And if you're interested in purchasing this monitor, then I will be making sure to leave affiliate links to Amazon and Luster down in the description. And if you end up using any of its links and make a purchase, then I do get a small commission that does help me run things just a little bit more smoothly around here. And if you end up using that Luster link, you might be able to come across a couple of sales or just some purchase alternatives that aren't necessarily this exact same monitor. And with that said, links to everything below. And also, if you like me enough and if you would like to see this monitor in action, then do come over to my stream as I would really like to have you down there. And I tend to stream every Friday and Saturday from 10 p.m. to 12 a.m. Eastern. So it is mostly meant for a time for all of us to just chill. And with that said, links to that below and including links to my Instagram and Twitter if you would like to stay up to date with any and all of the Tech Summit endeavors. And with that said, this has been Francisco from Tech Summit. Thank you for watching and I will be seeing you all later. Enjoy.